I kind of just make videos about whatever I want these days because I don't care about the algorithm. That's afforded me some freedom. Someone asked me um, about building a computer for audio production because I was streaming the other day and working on some audio stuff. And that's kind of what I want to talk about right now because I'm doing audio stuff. So let's do that, but let's do a little capitalism first. Get your Windows key in order so you're not dealing with the stupid default wallpapers and stuff. And then we'll get down to business with a little bit of uh, advice on audio gear and also um, putting together a computer for audio creation. Shall we? You've got that stupid logo on the bottom. You shouldn't be living like this. No one should live like this. This is whokeys.com where you can get a really good deal on a bunch of software, but namely Windows and Office. Where Windows Home or Pro. You can also get a combination of Windows 10 Pro plus Office 2019, or you can just get Office 2019 all by itself. So I'm gonna grab Windows 10 Pro and then we're gonna activate it by clicking on buy now. The coupon code is TS25. See that 1875, TS25, apply. There we go, 1406. Once you've made your purchase, it'll redirect you to this page. If you lose this page, you can just go up here on the top, click on this, and then click on user center. If it's taken a minute, you can just press the F5 button to refresh the page. And hey, there it is, view keys and codes. Then click on get the key. You're in the middle of the page. That is your key. Copy that, press start, type activate, and click on activation settings. From here, click on change product key, paste it in there, click on next, and you will be activated. Again, thanks to whokeys.com for sponsoring this video. And that coupon code is TS25. Grab some stuff while you're over there, Windows, Office, and get it activated. Now, before we get into like the individual parts, I wanna talk about the idea here. Now, if you're gonna be doing audio creation, you're gonna to have to use a DAW like Logic or Reason or Understanding or Cakewalk or whatever, I don't know, Pro Tools. I use FL Studio because it has the best piano roll, fight me, or, or don't, because you agree with me, I, I know you do. Now, when it comes to using those, they use a lot of cores, but is that gonna be more um, important or is frequency going to be more important? And if you're just doing um, a handful of plugins and effects on each one, maybe doing some live recording, and you're not doing like a ridiculous amount of stuff like 40 channels and 900 VSTs and stuff, you're probably gonna wanna lean on the side of frequency. I mean, if you've got an unlimited budget, just get the best of both worlds and get like something that has 16 cores, like I've got the 5950X and a lot of frequency, just go crazy. Uh, but if you're on a budget, you're gonna wanna probably try to start around six cores, maybe eight cores, but you're not gonna notice a huge difference um, if you, you know, if you've got a million cores, if your frequency is not as good. So frequency is probably the king when it comes to, um, just, you know, minimal setups and stuff like that. So I think the 5600X is a really good deal right now. Also some of the i7 parts, if you want to jump on Intel's bus, I don't know. Now the next question is RAM. How much RAM do you need? The answer is a lot. You know, the, the more plugins you have running at one time, the more RAM you're going to need. If you're just doing live recording, you won't need quite as much. But one of the things that's nice about RAM is um, most DAWs will allow you to just load your samples into RAM. And you can even go into the options of most of your different audio, whatever, and tell it to just load the samples into RAM when you first start up. So having a good amount of RAM will give you enough space, enough desk space, essentially to have all your equipment. I give you a picture it that way, like got all the all the stuff, just a lot of space to have all your instruments and VSTs. Uh, having you know less RAM is going to make the space you have. The let's call it like let's let's just make believe and say that all the VSTs make up your studio. And if you've only got a little bit of RAM, you're gonna have a small studio. So you're gonna have the guitars standing on the keyboardist's neck while you're trying to record. And then the drummer, and he's gonna be right there with you as well. And everything's just gonna get messy and there's gonna be some 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 slow down there because you're gonna to have to record, I don't know. Bad analogy, but you get, you get where I'm going with that. Just more RAM is usually better. And if you're using the AMD CPUs, it's a little more important to have a higher speed RAM so you can lock it to the Infinity Fabric and really utilize the full functionality of your 5600X. Wish I had a more commanding voice. The functional, because it's, Sounds like it would. All right, let's start with the build and we'll go through the rest of it. But that's the first idea. When we get to the end, I'm also gonna mention a few audio interfaces to get you started down that road. All right, so this is the CPU I'm gonna go with, recommend that you're gonna go with, because it's a good price, very good compromise between 
price and the speed you're going to get. Plus, it's a six core, 12 thread, and that's going to give you a lot of room for, you know, recording and stuff. I, I really like how fast the CPU is. It's significantly faster than the previous generation. Just note that if you're getting this, you might want to make sure that the motherboard you get, because I'm recommending this motherboard, make sure that it's the latest BIOS. That you may have to do a BIOS upgrade. Just know that. I like this one. It's a full-size board. And the reason I like the fact that it's a full-size board is you still have room for a GPU, and we have several extra slots there if you wanted to do some internal PCI audio interface cards or something like that. You could do it that way. I'm going to recommend some external, like, you know, uh, USB-C type stuff, but you know, internal would be uh, an option here as well. And we have a couple M.2 slots, a couple nice sized M.2 slots. And I also like the positioning of this M.2 slot here because it is above the GPU. Now what that's gonna do is that's gonna move your GPU down a little bit, give you room for bigger cooling units on top if you wanted to get a third party cooling unit. If you wanna go bigger, you can. If you're gonna overclock, you can. Um, but this one out of the box is going to be okay, <laughs> you know, if you're not going to be doing any overclocking. But speaking of overclocking, this motherboard will allow you a little bit of headroom. It has a pretty good uh, PWM design here. Oh, look at the MOSFETs right there. So you have a good power design on this motherboard. We have four RAM slots, so you can get a couple sticks, you know, a couple eight gigabyte sticks now. And if you wanted to upgrade in the future, you could throw a couple more eight gigabyte sticks on here. So this really checks off most of my boxes when it comes to this. And you're not gonna have to worry about the onboard audio, even though it is a decent audio option here. You're not gonna really have to worry about that because you're gonna be using an external interface. Now, when it comes to the RAM I mentioned, you need a decent amount of RAM. So I, um, I like going crazy with the RAM. And right now the prices are really good. So 32 gigabyte kit of 3200 uh, speed memory. You can lock the infinity fabric on this at 1600. Oh wow, you can get these crazy, crazy camouflage designs to match your tough, we're using an MSI motherboard. You can pick the color that suits you the best. Now, if you wanted to get half of this, you could just go and grab two uh, eight gigabyte options, but it's nice to have the dual channel. It will give you more throughput. So make sure that if you're gonna get RAM, get two sticks instead of one so you can run dual channel. And then you'll always have the you know ability to upgrade later. Right, for the M.2, and I do recommend you use an M.2 for this system because uh, a lot of times you're gonna be transferring stuff or stuff that's on the hard drive is going to go from there into the RAM frequently. So you want to make sure that your, your hard drive speed is, is quick. And I'm going to go good, better, best. This T-Force model is good. I think it does like 2000 or so, 2200. Let's see. Yeah, 22, 2100 on the, on the read here for the one terabyte. And then on the right is 1700. So that's the good option. Reviewed well. Um, and it's $92. Now, a little bit more speed for, for you know, 30 extra bucks here. It's the same size, but this one is 3,200 on the, on, on the read and, and uh, 2,000 on the right. So, and I, I've got one of these in my system here. It's what we're recording to right now is one of these. I've got the uh, four terabyte version because I'm ridiculous, but uh, I like to have all my VSTs on here. Now, if you've got a lot of libraries, you may need to get a little bit bigger of a you know, a drive, but this is, you know, to get I'm beatboxing, but this is pretty good to, to start with. As you can see, once you get it to two terabytes, the price jumps up, you know, quite a bit, but having a bigger drive really helps. I like to use one of these as my extra drive. So if you have a budget, grab one of these as your main drive, because this is PCI Express Gen 4, and this is ridiculously fast. So yeah, quite a bit. I don't know where this 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 is weird right up but yeah this will go 5000 or more on the read so get one of these and then one of these as your secondary drive and then throw a folder on there for all your VSTs and effects and libraries and if you've got native instruments and stuff like that uh, samples or whatever throw it on there cuz you'll have more space to play with okay graphics cards this is an audio build <laughs> I I tried to find something that was decent for gaming the graphics card market is garbage right now. In order to get a 3080, I bought a, a custom-built system, waited three months, it showed up. I took the graphics card out and sold the rest because that's the. it was cheaper to do that than it was to go and buy a 3080. Literally, 
I saved a couple hundred bucks getting an entire system. So it's it's absurd right now. If you need this, look on Craigslist. It's kind of ridiculous, but a friend of mine just got a um, 30, 60 Ti for 700 bucks on Craigslist. Richard, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> okay, so the question really should be like, what's the minimum? You know, you can get like a, I don't know, a 34, 50 or something like that, like a cheaper 50 to $100 AMD. And as long as it supports the resolution of your desktop and it has a couple gigabytes of memory, it'll be fine. As long as you're not doing any gaming, you're not going to be using the, the graphics card when it comes to, you know, doing all the processing and stuff. That's mostly going to be your CPU. Now, if you also are going to be doing Premiere or you're going to be doing some, you know, productivity, um, then you might want to get a better graphics card just for that. But for audio, it doesn't matter that much. I'm just thinking... Well, if you want a game as well, you may as well get something to play games. 1650 can play games decently. The four gig version, yeah. I'd rather have an eight gig card, but if you're playing them at 1080p, you're you're okay. This will play games at over 100 FPS on medium settings, most most modern games, but not cyberpunk really. All right, so the Seasonic power supply. You want to have a nice, clean power supply. Uh, and I like the Seasonic drives quite a bit. They make, a, they OEM for a lot of other companies out there. And they've been the kings here and there. They're, right now, it's much more even playing field. But they've, you know, they've been top of the line for quite a while. It is 80 plus bronze, and this system should run it in like the 70 to 80 percent capacity, which is usually where the highest efficiency is. So, I, I would use this. Okay, when it comes to the cases, a couple different considerations for an audio build. Are you going to be doing microphone recording, and are you going to be in the vicinity? of your case while you're doing that because it'll get picked up you know like the fans and stuff they might get picked up especially if you have a, a mic that's you know sensitive and you know it's picking up a lot of the tones in the room and everything like that you may be able to hear um the fans if the microphone's going to be really far away or if you got a long cord you can put it in a different room or if you have a sound booth that you've done some audio treatments to then you'll you'll be all right but i usually go for a small ish uh, but but still you know full atx case and this Corsair 100Q is somewhat silent, as you can see. We've got foam on the inside right there. It's uh, not going to have the best airflow, but it's going to be quieter. If you're okay with like noise because you're just messing around with VSTs, even if you're plugging a guitar up uh, or something like that and, and re recording that or a keyboard or something like that, not a, not a MIDI interface, but like an actual keyboard, if you're recording those sounds into your computer, uh, well, even if you're doing a MIDI interface or whatever, that's not going to be a big deal because you're not recording anything that's mic'd. It's not going to pick up the, the hums of the fans. So you'll be okay with something like this. And this is a very good price. I don't care about these stupid rebates. This also comes with a couple of fans, which is nice to have out of the box. Um, if you really, really, really want it silent, just go ahead and grab a few Noctua fans while you're here on, on the site. Just get some, there you go. Just grab some of these. They're solid and ugly. And two of them cost as much as the entire damn case, but it's worth it because they are silent and keep everything cool. I would cool everything with these. And if you want to go crazy with the silence, like get one of these for your CPU and things will be nice and quiet. A couple Noctuas, this on top of the CPU. It'll be a beautiful thing. Just put Noctua's all in your case, everywhere. All right, let's talk about audio interfaces for just a minute. The audio interface that you need, a lot of that's gonna depend on how many channels uh, you're recording. Now, the question I got the other day was specifically for multiple channels, and this one gives you a few different channels, not a, a gazillion, but as you can see on the back here, uh, we have a couple inputs on the back. And I like this one also has two headphone uh, outputs. Got some balanced stuff here. I don't know about these RCAs, at least we got some balanced outputs right there. We've got RCA's mini pass-through USB-C. But the one thing I like about the SSL SSL2 Plus, uh, you get two in, four out. There's a just SSL2, and that one only has um, two outputs, but it's very similar. Uh, if you can find it down here, it's somewhere down here. But the thing I like about this compared to like the Focusrite and stuff is it has lower latency and that's the how fast it is to record through this interface, get it to your system, and then have the audio come back to your ears so you don't perceive any delay. Now, there's a few things you can do to mitigate this on top of just having a decent audio interface. This That's probably one of the most important things. If you try to record it straight into your computer, you're going to have delay that's noticeable, like 15, 20 milliseconds. 
like you you'll play the note on the guitar like dong and then like you'll have like a millis few milliseconds and you, then you'll hear it and it'll be weird it, it makes your timing it messes it messes you up there's a few other things like i said you could do to mitigate this inside your daw you can record at um, you can set, set your environment to be 4800 uh, kilohertz or higher the higher you go the lower the latency the environment's going to be but also the more difficult it is going to be for your cpu to process everything so you're going to need a really beefy cpu if you bump it up to like you know 192 kilohertz or something i like that one or two did i say well you get what i'm saying there the more you bump it up the lower the latency the more difficult difficult it is for your cpu i would think most people who uh, are grabbing that six core or if you want to go with the eight core 5800 x or something like that you'll be okay at 4800 and it might be a good compromise to get that in one of these and just be good to go so the other options if you uh, want something that's a little smaller a little lower priced these are awesome i probably like this over the focus right because it does have slightly lower latency than the focus uh, than the uh, focus right but th that's also a good interface everybody likes this one the scarlet um, and the scarlet here this is a four channel option but you know a lot of times when you're looking at this stuff the things that are going to be important are the inputs and outputs that you need for all the equipment that you have and uh you know think about this do you need nine things plugged in at the same time you know if you're recording an entire band at the same time then okay well you might need to have these four mics and then you need phantom power and all that stuff so you got a couple of them there with phantom power and um you know you may need something like this to record multiple things at the same time or if you if you're obviously if you're recording an entire band at the same time you might just want to go ahead and get like a full-on mackie digital board to plug up so you have like lots of channels uh, we're not going to go that crazy in this video we're keeping it smaller but if you're you know recording 10 different instruments but you're only going to record one or two at a time then this will be just fine because you can record a couple at the at the same time so it's all up to you this is the one i use because the latency I, you know for the lower cost stuff you know you could spend over a grand and get even lower latency and stuff and there are some out there that um will actually load the plugins on the audio interface um, they have to be mostly plugins that are made by the company or for the audio interface but you have uh that is an option as well once you get into the really expensive stuff loading your plugins directly into the audio audio interface so there is virtually no latency whatsoever and that can also be a good way to record also another tip if you're recording stuff and you're playing like a keyboard or whatever just go ahead and turn off your um your c states sounds kind of weird but if you turn off your c states in your uefi and your bios that'll bring the latency down make sure that your usb in your device manager make sure all your usb ports are set to um not turn off or not be disabled for any power or anything like that just make sure they're on full power you can go into the preferences and set that up so like in windows you press just the, the windows key and x and it brings up this little menu and then you can click on device manager i'm gonna go down here to my usb stuff down here at the bottom and i don't have an audio interface on this computer this is my streaming rig so you know just, just click on properties on these devices make sure uh, power management make sure you uncheck this see where it says allow the computer to turn off this device to save power just make sure that is not check marked if you know where your audio interface is turned on you can just uncheck that one otherwise you may have to go and uncheck all of them but that'll help with the latency um, and then while you're recording if you're still getting some like latency and stuff you may want to go in and just turn off all the effects that you're using and just record to like the most basic thing and then you can put your effects back on once it's finished if you're sending it through an entire stack of effects and you've got echo and reverb and and a compressor and all that other kind of stuff on there an exciter if you have all that stuff going and you're trying to record at the same time everything in that stack is going to add a little bit of latency so by the time it gets back to your ear you may be pressing a button on the keyboard and then being like ding Ding. like you don't want that so everything we're doing here is to reduce that to make it easier uh, for you to record your stuff live instruments are a little bit easier than instruments that are vsts that have to go into the computer then out in the back and then you know all that kind of stuff so anyway that's uh is that everything i believe that's about everything right yeah that's all that all right so that's the uh audio recording computer that i would put together 
So if you want to hear some of my stuff, I'm currently thinking about making an album that's dedicated to Deus Ex, the original game, just because I was playing around and ended up with some sound effects and stuff that kind of reminded me of Deus Ex. This is not, I mean, like, there's just electric pianos and stuff. And we even have some echoey. If you played Deus Ex, you might have heard that before. I even have some actual Deus Ex sounds here. But anyway, so I've been just playing around with this. But I might release an entire album with this. enough of that so yeah that's what i'm working on right now that's why i feel like making an audio video obviously an audio video oh my god um that's why i feel like making this video talking about audio products because that's what i'm doing currently um on the side actually this is on the side that's what i'm doing is my main thing and that's how it's going to be anyway let me know what you think in the comments if you have other suggestions uh, particularly for audio interfaces and stuff you can throw those in the uh, in the comments if you have any other questions and stuff. Hit me up on Twitter, or if you have advice or suggestions, maybe you're in the industry and you're like, that's something you said wasn't right, man. I don't know why you talk like that. You talk like this and your mouth never closes. Man, that wasn't right. Whatever. Just hop on over. And if you're from Nashville, uh, hi. I bet you thought I was gonna say something mean. <laughs>